Get ready. It's being live streamed now. Hey, we can't see us, but you <laughs> can see us. We can't see you. And now, hi. Okay, we are going to share this link. Copy. And put it on Facebook. I think this is how it works. Yes. And this is an amazing thing. So just bear with us as we set up. Hey, good morning. If you're already tuning in and seeing this, uh, you're about to take part in a uh, very special Christmas celebration and program with, I hear, between 300 and 400 and who knows how many wow. brick kiln workers in Pakistan who are in debt slavery, but they have today off. And so food has been provided and I suspect some they bring themselves to gather together for a large feast and a program presented by Narratology and uh, the team we work with in Pakistan. So I'll do introductions in a moment as soon as I get this on Facebook. Uh, let's see, how about Dr. Chris? That's a good place for this. And here's a creative post. I wonder if we'll see ourselves moving on Facebook. This is crazy. I've never done this before. Have you done this? This is wild. She just posted, this is the first time. posted on everybody's pages. Let's put in Indian subscribers. Uh, do that. Um, who else? One more. I, my page. I always feel kind of like show off you when I put it on my page. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to do that exactly. But I could put it on Global Church. Professional page in Global Church. You know. And there it is. That's how I look in all my photos, by the way. <laughs> I've never taken a photo that doesn't look like that. Okay. All right. So we're going to take this and we're going to mute that because we are so live. It is as live as live can be. Hey, hi. So good morning. My name is Dr. Chris. And we're going to record this too. You betcha. Good morning. My name is Dr. Chris. And next to me is my good friend uh, and a colleague in ministry, Ivan Ramirez. We are joined together at, at 0600 hours from Kentucky in the United States uh, to be a part of a special um, Christmas program taking place just outside of Lahore, Pakistan, mm -hmm. where it is approximately 4.14 p.m., uh, this is a day of celebration for brick kiln workers who, by and large, regionally, if not nationally, have the day off from their indebted servitude, where they um, produce bricks each day. We'll talk about that more of that about that later. Um, to pay off a debt that very often they have entered into because a family member has needed medical care or the purchase of medicine that was outside or dowry uh, that was outside what they could afford and they really were compelled to take that loan of their own volition, but that's how it's done. Uh, and so uh, today is the day where we celebrate um, with this group of brick kiln workers, the birth of Jesus Christ who came to set the captives free. Yes. And uh, every once in a while, I'm gonna toss it over to Ivan. So just be ready to go and say, Yes, God is good. <laughs> Amen. Would you like to say something this morning? And yes, good morning, everyone. We just are so thankful, and I'm just blessed to be part of this this morning. So, um, it's such a it's such, that's such a joy. <laughs> it's such a joy just to see the opportunity that t today's program will bring. And so, I'm just excited to see what the Lord is going to be doing in the midst of this because it's it's a bigger, broad, broader picture. You know, it's the world. It's the global thing coming together. But I was just reminded, and I was sitting in church yesterday, how they were talking about when, um, you know, the angels came to to the shepherds during Jesus's birth, and how he, the angels appeared into different places and people. It was just like he was including everybody. He was including all. And so I'm just like recalling, like today, hopefully that the people that have come and watch this this program and being able to be part of it, and also seeing. Um, the joy that this is going to be. So I'm just, I'm just blessed to be here today. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I couldn't agree more, Ivan. <laughs> and I, it, so often in ministry, um, a little inside baseball, if you're familiar with that term, uh, you probably are. Um, very often the planning team has planned the songs and then we plan the message and we planned all of the orchestrated all the events of the worship and based on deep faith but then also in the practical matters of getting everything done in a certain time period it can feel like the minister is really kind of operating the ministry uh but christians don't believe that we believe that the holy spirit is operating the ministry mm -hmm. and so we really don't know what's going to happen here and in fact um all that this ministry all this ministry with the brick kiln workers has been something we've seen evidence that god has just generated this on his own it's been no one's initiative no one's planning mm -hmm. uh, independent of the lord it really is his uh, uh, his plan and his vision, and we are along for whatever role we would play inside of his plan. So uh, periodically you will see one of us or me or someone uh, get onto the cell phone here to check in with our team and see how they're doing, uh, what's going on with them. Um, one moment, please. I'm just going to mute for a second. Okay, so the team in outside of Lahore will be joining us shortly. And what I'm anticipating is our screen will become two screens, one with our picture going on a large uh, screen projector there so that those gathering can see and hear the message this morning. And then also we will be able to see their faces and their reactions. And I am hoping at four in the afternoon, it is still quite light uh, there in Lahore. I assume that it is. And we'll see uh, a, a window into another world. If you were ever, if you ever said, gosh, what was it like to live in different times? Mm -hmm. You know, certainly um, that they have cell phones and projectors set up. It's not exactly like the old times but they there's 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 uh, details and nuances of that culture that to me anyway feel like the early biblical days mm. do you ever when you're reading scripture think you know what would it have been like to be there yeah no absolutely i mean i also begin to think about how you know when they were reading the letters it's sort of the same thing except now is there's technology <laughs> right it's like imagine being sitting down reading one of Paul's letters that came to the church and you're like sitting there and just like anticipating and it's a different environment yeah. and like right now we're in a different environment we're in this little awesome shop called narratology right and then they're over there celebrating getting ready for this little feast right a big feast not not little at all and so being into able to enter to a different world through a different lens and seeing it from our side of the end so it's really it's just a great opportunity <laughs> Oh yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more with. I've agreed with everything you've said this morning. So I hope that you know it's genuine, it's honest. Um, I I keep thinking about um, just the joy of it. Feels like so much of this is what God is doing, and we just we just don't know what is next. It really just feels outside of our our care or our guidance. We're moving along with it. And if you are a person who serves in ministry, you may be chuckling right now and say that's what all ministry is like, uh, despite our best plans, um, things kind of go their own way sometimes, and we are always in reliance to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and the plans of, uh, of the Lord. Um, uh, and so anyway, that is what's going on this, this morning. Um, I had a really good comment just pop in my head, and I was like, that is something we should talk about. Um, the uh, the message this morning is um, a message prepared to celebrate the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you if you serve in ministry and you've prepared a Christmas message every year and you've presented it to a Western audience, the United States, somewhere else, um, you're anticipating a lot of things to be known by your your audience. They've you know they've heard it before, perhaps they've been in church before. Maybe your church members have been there the last twenty years in a row. 
Uh, but but here, I, we can't take that for granted. Um, most of the brick kiln workers are Christians, uh, but for different circumstances, uh, illiteracy is high. Uh, if one spends a great deal of time uh, in debt bondage, that doesn't allow for opportunities to attend a church. Um, in Pakistan, uh, Christians make up, my understanding is 1.5%. I've heard a little lower and a little higher, but about that number uh, of the percent, uh, percentage of people. And so churches would be less um, uh, available, less accessible, depending on where a person would live in, in, the, in the nation. Hmm. And so there, I, you know, I enter the, the writing of a message without the presumption that, well, everyone knows this and everyone knows this other part about the Christmas, uh, the, the, the birth of Jesus and uh, his being called Emmanuel, God with us. And so uh, it, it is interesting to prepare a message without kind of blindly, if you will, because I can't make an assumption about what people know um, what do you think we should do when we have a situation like we don't really know what we're going into? We're only trusting, as I say, only. We have to trust Jesus. What's your kind of what's your counsel, and <laughs> what do you do in those situations where you don't know? That's a great question, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One thing is that you're just making sure that you're trying to lean upon the Holy Spirit um, for those who are Christians, right? But it's also just like. I was also thinking as you were speaking, and I agreed with you, is that also whenever, like, this is an opportunity to revisit the gospel, you know, revisit that opportunity. It's like, oh, wait, you know, Christ did come as a babe. You know, he came as a, as a baby. And so I'm also reminded of how um, it's that he became the new Adam. Adam didn't get the opportunity <laughs> to become a baby, right? I'm I'm reflecting of also of like what I was hearing the other day because you know we've been in Advent season, so I'm reflecting of what was spoken yesterday at church as well. It's like these are not my words. I'm like reiterating the words that were spoken. I'm like I never thought about that, you know. And so because Adam was created out of just dust, you know, he was just formed. Right. He didn't have the opportunity of like being born into a baby, being fragile as 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 Jesus was, you know. But then it was just also an opportunity, just like even Christ came in in a humbling way. He was born in what was like a life, like a, in a little barn in a way, right? He was placed in a manger where there's possibly hay, animals all over him. It wasn't quiet at all. You know, we hear the song Silent Night. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm oh, like, I don't know if it was that silent. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, how do we step into that and use our imaginations to kind of figure out what that would have been like mm -hmm. and, but not embellish to such a degree yes. because so much of our faith is <clears throat> known and yet we still feel like it's, uh, it's just embedded with mystery. Yes. So, <laughs> so and that, that's a good word. Mystery. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah it is. We're, we're engaged in the mi minister, uh, the mystery. Okay. So Thank you, because you reminded me of something that I wanted to say a minute ago that went out of my head temporarily. Um, so uh, this is a, a, a uniquely um, uh, American, ex maybe not a uniquely American experience, but um, have you ever felt like someone has asked you to pledge something, which by the way, we're not asking for any pledges or, or any money today, but if you've ever been asked, you know, because the need is great and then the, the ministry is mentioned and you agree, yeah, that, that surely sounds like a lot of need is there. There can be a part of us, just our human reaction, and you may be different, but I'll just be personal. Uh, my reaction can sometimes be, how do you solve this? You know, world hunger. How do you solve that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, there's a you know, a, a, there's famine or disease, and we need to respond to it. Well, how do you solve that? Um, I, I I can't say that the brick kiln um, slave indebted labor problem is solved today, mm -hmm. but I can say it is being addressed today. Yes. Uh, yes. What what is in our power to do? We would say as Christians. Uh, and am I quoting John Wesley correctly? Uh, being not far from the campus of Asbury Seminary, I better get this right, um, but to do for one what you would want to do for others is that John Wesley, we mm. will look that quote up, um, but... Uh, I think that's a good, I think that's correct. 
I, yeah, that would be so good if it's right. I hope it is. <laughs> we're, we're entering into uh, the lives of other people. This is no fly-by, um, and I don't believe any ministry looks at their work that way. Um, but we don't, we don't want to be flying by, dropping off something, and hitting the road. Uh, we want to engage with um, individuals um, who are in um, um, brick kiln bonded uh, labor uh, since the beginning of November, uh, which before that we've been working with our team, but starting in early November, Narratology um, has invested the, the um, profits of the store and other funds that are available in ministry um, to purchase families out of debt slavery. Uh, so um, let me describe what that's like because a whole presentation has not been created, but we will see photographs of the before where the, our team is talking with the kiln workers. You hear their backstory, how long they've been uh, in debt, in debt uh, to the brick kiln owner who originally presented that loan to them. Uh, the wife is in slavery, the children, perhaps a grandfather, grandmother. Uh, and you hear their stories, three years in bonded labor, five years, seven, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. um, and then you hear the price of what, it, what they're repaying and that they're making by hand a thousand bricks a day, uh, every day, um, wow. in order to pay back that debt. Uh, and so we've entered into that and, 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 and paid off their debt and then our team will show us photographs of the business transaction with the kiln owner, uh, the, the delighted faces of the family that's now found freedom. Um, we purchase a cow, generally, sometimes a sewing machine for stitching, uh, and set up the former kiln workers. Our team is responding. Exciting. Yes, this is getting exciting. <laughs> um, so that they can earn a living afterwards. And that's really just phase one, if you will. We believe the Lord is calling us to do mm -hmm. more to bring some stability. Um, and that leads us to another. Please wait. He says, please wait. This is insider, truly insider. Please wait. That's fine. We can do that. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, we're, we're entering into this uh, not with the um, reaction that, and I'll just pick a personal, that, that I might have, which is, well, I, I believe it's worthy cause, I'll give some money. Mm. Or, um, well, I, I did something, you know, I volunteered, and then I'm going to step back from it because it's just overwhelming, this taxing feeling of a problem. Yes. Um, but somehow the Lord has wired this ministry with a desire to step into relationship with people and, and have the expectation that that will be long term as long as the Lord would have that plan. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of like that model. Um, I, I hear it echoing in other places in Christendom where people are serving. It's kind of like, um, it's not that, hey, we're the rich Americans. We're going to step in, do our part, but then we're going to hit the road and get out. It's more like we have something that we can contribute, but other cultures have just as much to contribute to, contribute to us. Well. Yes. Um, do you see that and hear that as well? What are your, what are your thoughts as our, as our, um, as our uh, city anthem plays in the background, <laughs> <laughs> our city song? I I was thinking about how like, I love how you put it. You said we're entering into relationship. You know, uh, in the past, I feel like the church has failed in that area of like we're gonna enter, we're gonna like you know, plant this church or we're going to give this amount of money or all these different things and then you forget, hold on, we forgot to enter into relationship. But the way that this is being said is that we're entering into relationship because they do have something to contribute back to us. And then I've seen that like the people who are missionaries are now also in trying to enter a relationship. Churches that are trying to partner with other churches in like other different countries, whether that's South America or Asia, they're wanting to enter a relationship because it's no longer, oh, we're just gonna give you money, but we're not gonna, we, we don't wanna hear anything about you. Or we don't, we just wanna make sure that we look good. But it's like, that's far from it. That's not even the gospel anymore. <laughs> so it's like, when we enter into relationship, when we are part of that bigger picture and hearing them speak and giving, you know, they have something to speak to us. It's like a, it's it's like a sword being sharpened, right? Yeah. 
we have to sharpen each other. It's like iron sharpens iron, so it does man does to another. And so we're sharpening one another. And I think that's part of it, you know. We're part of this body of Christ. It's the bigger picture. It's the church. It's the whole church. Is that now it's not just the hand, but it's the hand and the foot and the hand. Like, it's every body part coming to work together and function. If you, I'm, I'm sorry. Now I'm going to go into anatomy. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's just like the body, right? If the nerve, it, let's say you cut yourself with a knife uh, on your thumb. Well, you're going to have signals. The nerve signals are going to go straight to your brain immediately. And they're saying, oh, there is blood gushing out. We got to, we got to, your hand's going to immediately try to stop the bleeding and put pressure. While your body's already bringing in all the blood cells there to prevent it from bleeding out. And then after that, it's just like the entire body coming together and responding to that one hurting part. I am so plagiarizing that. <laughs> <laughs> That is so great. So are you saying that kiln workers are kind of in a way cut and severed and hurting? And for those of us uh, like me who got up this morning in my you know, comfy home and mm -hmm. I made an awesome cup of coffee and I sat down to read my Bible, that, that's incumbent upon us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and respond to another body part that's in pain. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just mean to repeat that like, let me translate what Ivan just said. Yes. I just mean like I'm listening actively to what you say. I thought that was just great. Uh, I'm going to actually just mute for a second and ask you. We are back <laughs> after a technical break. No new word from our team uh, on the ground, um, but I received some messages. Maybe I'll share a message with you. We are not just vamping here, um, but, it, but this event today is going to be several hours. Don't turn off yet. Um, <laughs> and so it's kind of like an open house is how I'm imagining it. You might watch a little of it and go about your day, come back and see some more of what's happening. This is the very, very early part when they're setting up, but I want to just... I got excited messages. Um, uh, Chan is one of uh, the members of our team and um, he sends messages at all hours and I have to do the translate, like what time it is in Lahore with what time it is in the US and it's like two in the morning his time. He's still thinking about the brick kiln workers and this event um, and he's been serving there, um, I think he said since 2017 uh, he's a 21 year old man, oh, wow. which I think just shows a lot of maturity and deep faith. Um, and, and I just, it's just wonderful to work with him. And he, it's, he inspires me. Uh, okay. So, oops. Um, so yeah, I will find, I will definitely find, mm. uh, okay. We have arranged food and tea. Uh, there'll be a cameraman and a large screen. So there, this is kind of a big festival in a lot of ways. They're going to record the entire event for, for a video, which don't please don't think like it's uh, Netflix. Um, this is a ministry that's really bare bones, but um, mm -hmm. I think when he says video, he means it will be recorded onto video and be able to be made um, um, separately, uh, available separately from their perspective, which will be really fun. Um, and then he mentions that a friend of his you know, he's a man of you know, deep prayer, mm -hmm. so he's praying for the technology being in place, and he receives a call from his friend. And so far, Chan has been doing everything with his cell phone. Oh, wow. So, like, when I've preached at the Brick Kilns, um, which um, has happened twice, I believe, maybe just once, twice, yeah, twice, um, <clears throat> uh, he does that on his cell phone. Um, but he told me, he goes, my friend got a new laptop, and so he gave me his old laptop, and now I have the laptop to work with. And so he's delighted, and I'm delighted with that too. Uh, so he's arranged for food and tea and told the cameraman to make a video <laughs> of this. Uh, he's pretty excited about it. And uh, he had a whole list of this uh, recording the entire event, 
to show you from start, uh, including worship session, um, uh, table prayers session, your address, the message, meal serving, Christmas cake cutting session, tea, all the rescued families um, that have been part of narratology, which is 12 in all actually. Um, wow. When we started planning this, our team, which um, I love, they are to the point, and they'll still say things to us like, well, how many are you gonna, you know, how many debts will you, are you gonna pay off? Mm. And you're there thinking, you know, well, I don't really know, um, stepping into the mystery, right? Yes. And so um, I said, Let, we're gonna pray about it. My wife, Krista and I, and, and the team, we're all praying about this and saying, what's the number? And the thing that popped in my head was that 12 days of Christmas song, mm. which has a lot of verses about these gifts. On the first day, there's this gift, and on the second day, there's this gift. And I thought, well, 12, that sounds good. 12 disciples, 12 days of Christmas, how about 12? 12 tribes, mm -hmm. how about 12? And so we chose the number 12 families. Uh, I, I don't wanna say no special meaning in that, but no extraordinary um, uh, meaning for me, if you understand my point, uh, just that number seemed to stand out to me. Um, and so we have since November um, invited the community to partner with us, uh, in not a fundraiser. Um, uh, part of my work as a pastor, part of Ivan's work as a minister is to engage people in a way to say, let's look at this differently. Yes. Uh, this is not clever speak, which is gonna lead to the bottom line of, hey, do you have your checkbook out? Uh, don't, don't want your money today. Uh, but it is an invitation to have people enter into something that I've never experienced before and someone else may want may want to. Um, just a limited, which by the way, we've paid and that, that giving has ended. So in the future, we may do something else, but right now, nothing like that is really, uh, you know, similar to that is in the works. Uh, hmm. But um, this, I just wanted to keep stressing to you because we've heard so many of these appeals. This is not an appeal for money. Um, but we asked people, we invited people to enter into that with us, and it is surprising in a, a lot of ways, but I'll tell you a couple of the donations that really, donations, partnerships, whatever word you would use, that made the most sense. <clears throat> so, uh, one of my neighbors came down to Narratology, which you see the store back here, um, with their children and said that they'd been watching online and mm. seeing some videos and seeing uh, the photos that were posted and the children of their own idea started saving their coins oh, wow. and the money they had and they brought them down here to donate and to give. So they are a part of that. Um, back That's when we beautiful. were still, just, yeah, you're like, That's so beautiful. great. Um, and um, I received a, a notice from um, a person I know who's really struggling financially uh, and I won't tell you the amount that they gave, but it was not the largest amount contributed. I'm trying to say that in a polite way. It was not a large amount. Um, but to me, it reminded, it reminded me of the story of the widow's might um, because she wanted to give, and she did. And it wasn't a lot of money, but it was a great amount of love. Yes. And uh, that, that's just a huge, le huge lesson for me. Yeah. Thoughts. I was just thinking about that same story. It was just like, you know, how it's just been interesting to see the people who have been able to give. They give it out of their heart. They're giving it out of, out of just not something out of just like, oh, I, I feel convicted and I should give. No, it's coming out of their heart and God sees the heart. And so, um, you know, with that story of, of the widow, she gave more out of what she had of not, you know. Some people may have be in a better situation financially and yet give, but it's not like giving themselves completely over, right? Yeah. And then for some of these, like I'm just filled with joy with these little, you know, these these kids who came and started collecting their coins and like we want to give this. Yeah. It's not a whole lot, yeah. but it's still a whole lot. <laughs> it's not a whole lot, but it's still a whole lot. I'm going to do that annoying thing I do where I say back exactly what you just said and be like, yeah, Chris, I just said that. <laughs> it's like um, any of us can give a portion of what we have, but is it a proportion of mm. the comparison of what the wealth that we have? Uh, 
I'm a big a words guy. Words matter to me and what their meanings are. I really kind of fixate on that a little bit. Um, and I, when we say giving, I think it just triggers a lot of different pictures in people's minds. Mm -hmm. um, it is, to me, incredibly freeing to think that I'm only on earth for so long <laughs> and I and only have so much, um, but still I have um, an ability or an opportunity to do something with that, which I've been given, which I can give really from a bank account of, of love, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> how I would draw from that bank account might be an act of service. Uh, it may be a listening ear and it may be financial. And I'm trying to think of some of other of Gary uh, Chapman's love languages, but um, practical service may very well be um, what I would give from my storehouse or my account mm. of love. Um, but but very often, and I shouldn't say very often, I would say uh, in working with global pastors, um, money is not the most often asked for um, resource. It's education. Mm. Um, but when it is money, uh, it's awfully practical, excuse me, to quote Jimmy Stewart from It's a Wonderful Life, you know, you may not need money in heaven, but it's awfully practical down here. Yes. Uh, and it makes a difference in people's lives. Um, I'm just going to segue, because I have not heard back from our team yet, to a sermon that I had heard from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on YouTube. I heard this sermon. And he was preaching about that parable mm. Jesus taught about the rich man mm. who had so much money, he decided to tear down his barns and build new bigger barns and then fill them with all of his goods and then just relax because he had it made. And the parable goes, you know, you, you fool, your life is required of you tonight. Mm. And uh, Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, um, you know, I wish I would have been there to counsel him because I would have told him there are people with empty pockets and with people with wow. empty stomachs who could use that money. Yeah. And so uh, in, the, in the practical of, of our own world today, um, you know, which, which just, what strikes us from that? Is it, is it that if we had a barn full of goods, and I don't mean just imagine straw. You can imagine treasure chests of gold, if you like. You can imagine your own bank account and whatever the balance might be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what is best for that? Is it just it's sitting there? Or is it that it would be used in a way that makes a difference in people's lives? Which, mm -hmm. by the way, that's never like pouring water into a bucket with a hole in it. Yeah, you helped today, but now it's gone again. You know, you provided a meal, but now that meal has been consumed mm -hmm. and it's gone. Um, it never works just that way. God not only fills the stomach, he fills the heart with hope. Yes. And that person yes. goes off to encounter and inter, uh, interrelate with others with that generosity that you've spurned in them by your own good works. We spur one another on to good works, says Scripture. And so it's like it, you're just investing that into the greatest investment of all time. It is people and um, representing the kingdom of God here in our own times. Yes. So what would you like to say next that I can then plagiarize <laughs> as my own stuff? Go <laughs> Something good. No, I was just thinking about uh, the John Wesley quote, and it's, it just says, save all you can and give all you can. You know, that's what, what whenever you were talking, I was like, that's, that's a, a really good concept to have is just to, to in order to like, save whether that's you know your time whether that's there's just different types of resources right money you know um different rations when there's a famine you know you're saving but then it's not only just for yourself but it's to also give not to those not to only your just immediate people but to those around you and so yeah, i'm just reminded of like how it's just like when man <laughs> trying to think whenever uh christ feeds the is it 5,000? Mm -hmm. And so he's just like, bring all what you can. And then all of a sudden, a miracle happens, and it's given, and it's imparted to the 5,000. Yeah. It was just a small amount, but then eventually, God blessed it and said, here. And yeah. It was, and it was just such a, uh, an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And they collected more at the end than they started out with. Yes. It's pretty great. Um, let's mute here just one more second.
And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> so um, we're we're actually uh, seeing the Zoom call that's originating this sing- signal from here in beautiful downtown Wilmore, Kentucky. And then it is going to YouTube where it is being bounced over to Facebook. So wherever you may be listening and watching, we can't tell if there is one person watching this or um, many more than one. Uh, So we're just gonna continue to uh, talk and share updates from uh, the wonders of technology. Um, This from Chand, he says, uh, bro, that's my name by the way, bro, just wait a while please. There are some technical issues, uh, which is another lead in topic for us. Um, Someone told me once, and because it was a sermon probably, and it was told to all of us in the church, that if you're not really serving the Lord, you know, don't expect a lot of pushback from the enemy. But once you engage in representing the kingdom and kingdom work, you're going to find there's pushback from the enemy of our souls. And um, as well as this technology has worked here in the U.S., um, it seems like whenever we are connecting Um, through technology, not only in a Zoom or a video conference, but in other ways, Mm -hmm. Um, money transfers that we've done, um, different ways we've uh, interacted and stepped out to uh, actually execute the thing we're trying to get done. Uh, It seems like there are just headaches and obstacles that are just, they just appear. And um, of course our first human reaction is, oh, this is, you know, I just want this to go away. Mm-hmm. which we do. We're going to pray in a minute for technology, um, right? So we'll do that. But um, there's another part where I just say, I'm not worried about this at all. God will do his work um, with little or a lot, with everything or nothing, which he owns everything and has mm-hmm. access to everything and has created everything. Um, but whatever our perception of uh, the the obstacle, I don't let it worry me at all. Mm-hmm. I just move forward and I know that God will be honored exactly how he wishes mm-hmm. and that things will work out exactly as they should. And I don't worry a bit about it. And so um, let's pray for the technology because that's the next thing we should do. Absolutely. And then we'll just see what is un- what unfolds after that. So, do you want to pray for uh, technology and that the whole thing will work? Absolutely. If you would all join us with, in prayer, Father God, we come before you, Lord Father. Lord, we know that you're already working in the midst, and and therefore you are here now, Lord Father, um, and you're there in Pakistan. And Lord Father, we pray over this technology issues, Lord Father, that. That your kingdom work will not be interrupted because your kingdom is advancing, Lord Father. And as my brother Chris here was just saying, Lord Father, there's pushback. But Lord Father, no, Lord, we are leaning in and trusting you. God, we we pray over the technical issues, whether that's the, the Wi-Fi, whether that's an outlet, Lord Father, whether that's um, just the computer not wanting to function properly, Lord Father, or whether that's just a camera or a phone. Lord Father, we just pray over all these things right now, Lord Father, so that you may continue to be receiving the glory, Lord. Ultimately, it's you who is deserving it all, Lord Father. It's not for us. It's not for for our own for our own um, gratification and and efforts to to receive, Lord Father, but more importantly, Lord, is to to be humble and say, Lord, this is yours. We give it to you. You you made this mm-hmm. happen, Lord. You made this laptop work. You made this things that we are incapable of doing sometimes and out of our own hands. You made it possible, Lord Father. You make things that are impossible possible according to your will, Lord Father, according to your purpose and according to your timing, Lord. And God, right now we pray over this, Lord. We pray over these technical issues right now. And Lord Father, we are trusting in you and believing that you will have this Uh, functioning lord father thank you lord jesus thank you father and holy spirit continue to work in the midst of our brothers and sisters in pakistan right now lord father in jesus name we pray amen amen Amen. okay wow so whenever um ivan prays i listen 
uh, to what he has to say, and then I'm also listening for what the Lord would say through Ivan's prayer. And I thought about, again, this, this time that we have before the program begins, and mentioning a moment ago that the resource most asked for from global church, uh, global church pastors I work with is uh, uh, the resource of education. It's not, it's not money, just send money, just send money. It's not like that, it's, it's education they're looking for. Uh, we'll talk about that more in just a minute um, because education is really, could be defined as the knowledge of knowing and being able to access in opportunities Absolutely. that enrich human life. Uh, and give us a sense of not just appreciation, but also to be able to um, be trained and skilled in the work that God would call us mm -hmm. to do and to be able to um, better resource those around us in our family and in our community. So with education, uh, it is an on-ramp to a higher quality of life um, all the way around um, and uh, and uh, that's why it is so important. I think of education in many ways as being like the seeds that go in the earth. Um, the greatest seed of all is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and the greatest education is knowing that he was sent from the Father and that he is uh, God in the flesh, uh, born at Christ Christmas, and who died for our sins um, mm -hmm. as a propitiation for all of our sins so that we can be with the Father. Uh, and and uh, we pray also... <laughs> We pray also for an education that deepens our um, appreciation for all that Christ has done for us. Uh, but when others are educated, it is, um, it, is, it is teaching someone how to fish, not just providing fish f for them. Uh, so that was my point to all this. Uh, I'm going to toss it back to you for just a minute while I gain my bearings. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. You're doing great. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's just... I mean, I'm thinking about some places whenever it gives the opportunity for people who receive an education, it gives them an opportunity to, like, to pursue more education or an opportunity to just uh, help the family. And they're like, oh, wow. You know, whether that's a high school education, they're able to now go and work and provide something for their family, right? I mean, I'm thinking about other, th like the third world country for in our sense, right? Because we are blessed to have education here at a young age, but some people don't have that leisure. But yet it is something that is, is asked for, you know, and I'm thinking about, wow, maybe there's teachers right now that are probably possibly watching this, you know, I feel called to go t teach and I don't know where, you know. And so sometimes it might be in Pakistan or it might be somewhere else, like in the Middle East or in mm -hmm. Asia or South America or wherever the Lord is calling, right? Yeah. And it's just like, you know what, sometimes the Lord might be pressing on that and it's just like that education piece. And so it's just like a great opportunity. And so yeah, I, I, I'm just echoing what you were just saying as well. So well, I echo that echo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, and through this unbelievable technology now, um, a lot of the teaching, in fact, all of the teaching that I've been a part of has been online. It's been digital. Um, the world changed because of COVID. I know we've all heard that. Um, but it has opened up a, a, a fissure that was not there before, mm -hmm. which is we've all adopted this uh, digital language of speaking through video conferencing. Um, when you get a text message from someone in a village in Pakistan or India saying, you know, bro, send me the Zoom link, you know, you realize you're living in new times. Uh, and so uh, it's uh, um, the, the in-person model of education is so critical. Mm. But there's an alternative that's widely available, and that is um, for people who have knowledge in any given area to provide that um, digitally to another culture and to have that culture also give something that's missing in us that we may not be able to readily see on our own, mm. um, but it is there beneath the surface. Um, so very powerful words about about the importance of education. And I think just in seeing what God is doing in our times, as I'll just keep saying technology. If I say that 10 times an hour, I get a nickel. So um, <clears throat> it's with this technology. <laughs> so if you would set a nickel for the nickel jar, we, I said that we wouldn't ask for money, but that would be super. <laughs> um, so um, here's, here's another, this is, this, is, this is where I want to wrap this. This is an educational part of, the, of this um, 
um, this, this uh, live stream this morning. When I teach a leadership class, I often use this um, planting um, a seed in dirt or mm. uh, as, a, as a starting place. How do you become a leader? Well, you know, imagine that you're in a field and there's nothing there. There's just grass growing out of the dirt and an open meadow or something. You know, you're starting at the very beginning. You have nothing except maybe you have a shovel and some seeds and that's what you're starting with. But just with those, you can clear the land, you can plant the seeds, you can grow a crop, perhaps you've got an ax, you can cut down a tree. If you don't like the trees cutting down, imagine that you're in a time or in a place where that would be more appropriate to um, our sensibilities. And you build a structure and then perhaps there's uh, enough money from the, the um, harvest to purchase livestock. And now you've got um, an animal to help with the farming. You have milk, you've got yogurt, you've got cheese uh, and then you are going to find that people uh, will stumble upon your property and say can I work for you yes. or can I be a part of your community and and I have something to bring to this also and if you just kind of fast forward that it's not one person maybe it's two and then it's three it's six it's 12 it's 18 and suddenly what started as nothing but just grass mm -hmm. in a meadow becomes a community of reciprocity and trust and equal care for one another and people bring their skills, their temperaments, their personality, their kindnesses, uh, their talents, and their grace, and, and each contributes to uh, this new burgeoning community. Okay, so with that in mind, we're seeing that in real time with the birth of this global church, in my experience. If this could be happening all over, and I've seen glimpses of it in places, so I don't wanna make it seem like this is the only place this is happening. Uh, uh, I suspect strongly lots and lots of thousands and thousands of places. Um, but two people get together from other nations and they talk about their, their needs and what is needed. And then there's an idea, oh, we could do a live stream. Oh, I could preach in your church. Oh, we could talk about how to address brick kiln uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, you're interested in starting a Bible college. Well, how would that work? And now suddenly there are lots of ideas on the table um, to look at through the lens of shared partnership uh, with more resources. Um, and that is uh, an educational model about how leadership works, how ministry uh, can work, and how the church was actually designed to work. Exactly. And we're seeing that in real time, uh, which I love because very often uh, when preaching, uh, an illustration is about something in the past. Still wonderful, right? But, you know, back a couple of years ago, this happened and I prayed and here's how God answered the prayer is a marvelous testimony. And this one I feel like is literally happening live in a live stream where we're watching the work of God through ordinary people who just said, how can I serve you? Yes. And so um, I think it's, it's a moment to experience something in community that could be truly transformational as it has been in my life and so absolutely i'm just saying i'm also going to say that that i everything that you just mentioned has also sparked my ideas of like wow communities also now spreading into the digital world you know? uh, really yeah and so now it's just like what was impossible a couple of years ago or maybe 10 years ago or so you would not be able to have these interactions over zoom i don't think so mm -hmm. or like um skype yeah, it's no, Skype. <laughs> Skype, you know. Um, probably, maybe, but it just feels like that's just so, not not too long ago, but at the same time it is, you know. Yeah. But now we're able to interact in real time with people within a different country or a different, you know, in a different world beyond us, right? And we're now able to see that. And now it's, and we're entering into this uh, community. And I'm thinking about, like, now there's people in, and playing video games, and they're in a community within their own video game. But now we're entering in a, in, in a community through Zoom, through YouTube, through Facebook, through all these different social media platforms that we are now being able to enter. And it's just like, there's no limits right now. And God is still being able to utilize. I love how you placed it where people with different skills and different aspects of things that are coming in. So, you know, a cameraman that is, you know, working, he has a set of skills. Now the people who is like with the sound system, you know, they have a set of skills and it's just like every individual has a different skill and a personality and different strengths, right? But it's also beautiful because in the very senses that we all were created different and unique. We're all unique. 
I'm also thinking about a, a, of a, a snowflake overall. Um, for those who uh, have seen the snow, they might have seen that there are parts of um, where <laughs> each, if you look at it in a microscopic, it's different. I hate to interrupt you, Hello. Ivan. Hello, are you are you on video? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Are, are you on video? Hey, <laughs> we're on video. <laughs> uh, not really yet. Uh, please, uh, you have to talk with my elder brother, Sahil, uh, who is uh, translator. Okay, hi. Right, please, no. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to talk with the translator. Okay. I don't know why we're on the camera. Oh, hello, hello, friend. How are you? How are you? Oh, I am well. Excited about today. Thank you. Yes, and you are doing well. Yeah, I am doing well. I just want to ask uh, about what you are going to speak today. Uh, I will do. I will present the message. Uh, but sometimes my friend Ivan what is will. Your topic? Uh, I'll send you scripture verses. It is called God with us. Okay. Yeah. So, um, do you have the do you have the Zoom link? Yes. I I sent a Zoom. I'm going to do it on Messenger. Yes. Uh, I sent a Zoom. I Hi, I, I sent a Zoom link to Chan. Do, uh, yes, and uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, if you want to, I, I just want, I just want to know a little bit about your message because I'm going to translate you today. Okay, good. I'm going to send. Ooh, okay. I'm going to send Chan the entire message to his okay. to his messenger account and so you'll see the message okay. will that be helpful okay. yes okay good all right so i'm copying and uh just one moment please this is so crazy i'll read it i yes it's coming in just a moment okay so, yes, yeah, so, uh, hello? yes, hello. The message is sent. The message is sent. Yeah. And if you will join us okay. on, yeah, okay. and there is a Zoom link also. So, I will send this again. If you wish to join, we would love to see even setting up for the event. We would love to see any pictures. If that's okay. 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 I'll read the message. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, my friend. Hello? Oh. Hey, John? Yes, brother. Hello, how are you? Yes, brother, I'm fine. Oh, good. Uh, can you connect? to the Zoom call by cell phone? Hello? Hello? Can you join Zoom call? And that is that, okay. All right, we will see. Okay, so let's take this away for there. All right. All right, so now comes the time where Ivan has to go to his nine to five or eight to eight five, to five. Yep. <laughs> and so um thank you ivan for starting this absolutely. and kicking off the first hour no absolutely of our <laughs> and i'm hoping to if you send the zoom link to me i'll be more than happy to join on there as well oh, i will so that'll be amazing all right, all right thanks god bless you brother all right man god bless and blessings to y'all and i'll see y'all soon <laughs> all right we're gonna take a one minute break and then rejoin
Okay, so here's what's going on. Hi, here's what's going on. Here's the latest. Ivan has gone to work, but when he arrives, it's possible there will be some times for him to rejoin us here at, on Zoom, which is nice because uh, he will join. And it sounds like very soon uh, the team will be joining as well. They've had some technical issues, but they'll be up and running. Um, by faith, we uh, claim this, believe it to be so. And uh, until that moment, I'm going to move uh, some technology here and send a link to uh, Ivan so that he can join the Zoom as well. And so here is, here is his, where is his message? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to send this to Ivan. Very behind the scenes. I'm sure this is fascinating. All part of the ministry experience. So I drop this back down. Okay, hey, thank you. So until I hear from Chand again and the team, uh, I'm gonna continue and, and just talk a little bit about what's happened. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, uh, quite a bit has been in the works since uh, mid-September. Um, I've told friends that, you know, I've been on Facebook for a long time, since 2009, 2009. And uh, if I get a friend request in a month, that would, that would be great, but I probably wouldn't see more than that in a month. But one day in September, I received 500 friend requests on the same day from pastors in primarily India and Pakistan, although uh, many nations also um, in Sub-Saharan Africa, so you know, Kenya, uh, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Congo, Malawi, and others that I, uh, maybe missing South Africa, uh, asking for preaching and help with Bible studies and training pastors. You know, the very things that I've been trained to do here in the United States and have been uh, involved in as uh, vocationally for over 10 years and really even longer than that. Uh, and so uh, 500 is a lot. It's a lot of folks, and I didn't really know if it was a gag or a scam or, or what it was. Uh, I'm getting a message from Chand here. I'll share that with you when it comes in. But I knew I needed to do something, and he's downloading Zoom. Cool. Okay. But I knew that God wanted me to do something. I couldn't just delete these 500 friend requests. I started to friend and talk and figure out what was going on. And uh, between that day in September and really just a number of weeks, a number uh, of 3,500 additional requests came in almost exclusively from pastors and ministers. Almost no one else contacts me. Um, and so it's 4,000 in all that have reached out. And so in that time, um, a hub where these pastors can meet and exchange information and re resource one another, um, a hub for interaction has um, um, been set up. It's called the Global Church, and uh, it's it's you know it's a free social media site within the Facebook platform, and so there are about a thousand pastors who have joined, and they're part of this. And then uh, pastors asked me to preach or to teach Bible studies and um, different classes, or not classes, but different uh, seminars and those kinds of programming um, in different nations. And so that's through Zoom. And very often, not always, but very often those are recorded. And then they are placed and uploaded onto YouTube and my channel so that if someone misses it, they can receive that teaching, not only in English, but in the language uh, that the message was translated into live. Uh, so that's taken place. Uh, let's see what else. And then we have sort of generated um, a good, God has generated two really strong relationships with um, teams that I work with in Pakistan and also India. Those two nations have really risen out of um, uh, the forefront, uh, come to the forefront over the last few months, although I'm working with other nations. Um, and getting those programs up and running. Um, 
with Pakistan and India, uh, two teams have really emerged. And one we're working with today is the Lahore team. And they have been devoted to, it's really four members, and they've been devoted to uh, working nearly daily with the brick kiln workers at a couple of different um, brick kilns, uh, which led to the building of a lot of trust and which led to our deciding, now I'm referring to narratology, uh, to use the resources of narratology and other ministry funds to purchase the families, 12 families, um, out of debt bondage um, before Christmas. And that goal uh, was reached just last week. Uh, it, the Lord is doing so much in these ministries, it's hard to keep up with the, the posting of the photos and those things. I, I don't mean that in a way that it should elicit eye rolling. I mean, that's the, that's the spirit of what's going on. Um, uh, being a Christian, um, people are praying for revival all the time. People are hoping for revival all the time. And I, to some degrees, I've seen that here and there in my Christian walk, which is a long time I've been a Christian. Um, but I've never been a part of anything like this. It has nothing to do with me. Um, I feel like I, uh, something was passing by uh, uh, me and I reached out my hand and grabbed it and off I went with it. Um, I did not pull it anywhere on my own energy. Uh, but um, this, this an enormous number of pastors who reached out and then the messages have been absolutely paralyzing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be blatant. Uh, 50 messages a day with different kinds of requests, uh, more than I could possibly respond to. And then uh, you know, day after day after day, um, for, for months this has gone on. And so this is where that ministry is at today. Uh, uh, quite a lot has happened. Um, we talked about portions and proportions. Um, uh, a lot of my uh, energies are directed towards global church, but it is nothing compared with the amount of need for educational resources. And so lots of prayer and planning and framework developing and partnerships um, to speed up the process to educate um, for no cost. Um, this is nonprofit, no, no, one, no one's making any money from this. Uh, but to resource pastors in such a way that they will be able to do kingdom work uh, in their own language, in their own area. And so uh, that is the state of where things are. I'm going to read the message, and here's what's going on. We are there, but due to electric issues, some problems in the way, we are sorting this. Hopefully, uh, we'll be on soon. Um, no worries. Okay. Okay. Now, I could make the decision to turn off the live stream. Uh, you could make the decision to turn off viewing the live stream, but I'm going to continue with it for a little bit because I don't know that they won't have things fixed in five minutes or in five hours. Sorry, no discouragement. Uh, but I'm trusting in the Lord. And if you're a Christian or just curious, watch along and we will see what the Lord has in mind and how things work out. Um, maybe we have an idea that we set up, uh, you know, our ministries and our lives like a play. We write the play and then we watch it unfold. And um, no matter what our um, philosophy of life may be, um, the best laid plans often go awry. Uh, and so this is, uh, from a Christian perspective, God's work, he is orchestrating. It does not mean he orchestrated an electric power, um, what did he say, issue or problem. Um, but uh, it, it's present nonetheless, and, and we'll see what the Lord will do through this. Uh, so um, that is the work of the global church. Um, it's been exciting. A YouTube channel that wasn't came about out of this. The YouTube channel has over a thousand subscribers. So if you um, are uh, um, aware of the standards that have to be met for monetization, one of those standards is uh, a, a channel has to have over a thousand subscribers. And after a thousand subscribers came, uh, it took a while, but 4,000 hours of viewing time. Once that happens, then there's monetization. And I bring all this up because I believe that God is going to help fund um, his work to the global church 
through the advertising revenue that's generated through YouTube, not through asking for donations. Um, I don't believe I'm going to be very comfortable in life asking for donations. I like the George Mueller model, if you're familiar with George Mueller and his work with uh, what was called Orphan Houses of the 19th Century in Bristol, England. Uh, so <clears throat> we are counting on Lord, the Lord for all of the provisions for this ministry, but one of the smart moves within that is to monetize a YouTube channel uh, so that people will tune in to hear messages <clears throat> or teaching or that the pastors uh, who want to access the content that's been pre-recorded, recorded live but now available on YouTube can also access that. And then each month the advertising revenue generates and uh, a check is sent um, and that money goes into uh, part of the funding for the global church. In the early days, it's not much money, but I hear that after a while it can be enough to be significant enough um, to really be a benefit to these churches. So that's one of the directions that the global church is heading into. Uh, as uh, um, um, 25 years in ministry and being a Christian even longer than that, um, it's, 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 uh, it's brand new territory in terms of ministry, of what is going on. Um, with the global church, uh, I love to preach in these in these uh, areas. Um, I preached on Saturday morning um, in Pakistan, and that meant it was oh gosh after 7 p.m. And of course, I never know when the camera comes on if it'll be a large church gathering or a small home church or something in between. But I, I preached to about mm, maybe 25 people. They were quite cramped in a space. Uh, but the mood and the energy, if I can say that, of the room are people who are interested. They want to hear the word of God. They want to know what God has to say. And the scripture and the preaching is very often, you know, ex you know right from the Bible. <laughs> You're saying, well, that, that is good preaching. Well, when you preach, you very often are trying to communicate a message. And so a pastor will say, here's an illustration. And, uh, and here's, this, this introduces us to our topic. Or if you've seen this movie, then you're familiar with this theme. And we use that kind of language to communicate to a modern Western audience. But that's not necessarily how preaching is done uh, when you are speaking to um, um, a gathering of Christians where Christianity is, the, is a minority religion and a small sliver sometimes of that nation's population. And you can take nothing for granted, like, well, they, they all know. Everyone knows that, don't they? Uh, you can take no part of that message for granted. Uh, and so it tends to be very uh, stick to Scripture and maybe one or two verses of Scripture and, and, and connect with them and find out what are their, uh, what, what, are, what are the points of that spirit-driven message that is absolutely encapsulating as best as a preacher is able to contain the message of that of that of that um, of that um, those scripture verses. Uh, so uh, it's just a, been a marvelous um, thing to be preaching to to a people who are just so hungry for the word of God. And and then I've got to mention the music very often as I love music. Uh, very often, I'll hear the worship music before I speak, and it's incredible. Uh, it is, it is to, to my ear, uh, nothing like the music that we hear in the West. Um, the melodies are different. The, the rhythms are different. I, um, I have some music background, and so I'm listening for the harmonic structure of their, of their piece of music. It's tough to pinpoint. It's just not what I'm used to. Uh, but it is absolutely passionate and powerful and beautiful to to listen to, and uh, I'd, I'd love to. Some some of the videos do contain music, but I would love to sometime just contain just to uh, uh, to um, provide a way for American or Western Christians to hear this worship music because it is so powerful. Um, uh, so this this uh, going back to this is, describes this journey that I've been on, which leads to today. Let's go back to that for a moment. Uh, today is a day when brick kiln workers have the day off from their labor and they're not docked any pay. Uh, so um, they're gathering together by invitation, I suppose, because they know members of our team uh, to spend time together and celebrate the Christmas um, holiday and to have food and cake 
and a tea and music and a program. Um, and so we're part of the team that's providing this program. And even though now it's just one, from our perspective, just one person talking into a Zoom um, a video conference and then sending it to YouTube and Facebook, uh, over outside Lahore, there will be hundreds of people who are already there. I'm kind of imagining a camp ish campground-ish kind of a look, but I don't really know. Um, I have seen um, the brick kilns and uh, what those areas look like, um, but I'm not really sure what to be prepared for uh, today. It's going to be exciting when um, it begins, uh, and, we, and we'll, we'll get a taste of that different culture. So um, I think what I'm going to do now is just kind of unlink for a while until they're ready, and then we'll continue the live stream then. See you in a little while, friends.